Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mint. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Linux Mint. So as you can see on the screen, I booted up into the ISO. And what I'm going to do is use your arrows to go up and down. And on the top one, I'm going to hit enter. And what it's going to do, it's going to run the Linux Mint operating system from the ISO. But at that point, it won't be installed. And that will give you a chance to play around with it and see if it's something you like and something you would want to install in your system. So it's booting up into the ISO. It's almost there. It shouldn't take too much longer. And there we are. We have booted up into the system. So what I'm going to do is type in display. And I'm going to move up to change the display. To 1920 by 1080 and apply it. There you go. Keep the new configuration. So this is Linux Mint. You have your bottom bar, you have your time. You have your menus. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to install the system. So you're going to click on this button and you're going to click on your language. I speak English. I guess you figured that out by now. And I'm going to hit continue. I'm just going to use the US keyboard. Continue. Up here you see install media codex. That's going to allow you to play uh, videos and music. So I'm going to click that on. I'm going to continue. This system is really easy to install. Uh, so it's going to say this computer currently has detected no detected operating system. What would you like to do? I'm going to erase the disk and install the next mint. Now, if you already have an operating system installed on your hard drive and you're installing Linux Mint onto your hard drive. It's going to recognize your Windows system or the other system you have installed and it's going to ask you if you want to install it beside it and do dual boot. I don't recommend that. So it's going to ask you if you want to erase the disk and install Linux Mint. We're going to say yes. Now if you're installing it on your hard drive, make sure you have everything backed up. All your personal files, your videos, your pictures, uh, Excel files, Win Word, MS Word files, anything that you have that's important, make sure it's backed up because it's going to erase your disk. It's going to erase your hard drive and it's going to install this system on your hard drive. So erase disk and install Linux Mint. Install now. It gives you a warning. If you continue, you won't be able to reverse the changes. Continue. So there's my city. You can pick a different city, but that's my city where I live. Hit continue. Now it's going to ask for your name. So I'm going to type in Mitch. Pick a username, I'm going to use the same one. I'm going to ask for a password. I'm going to put my password in. It's warning me that it's a short password, but I'm going to use it anyways. I'm going to continue. And now it's installing Linux Mint. Uh, this process is going to take about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how fast your internet is. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and come back when the installation is finished. So now the installation is finished and I'm going to restart it. Press the enter button. If you have a USB stick plugged into your machine, you have to pull it out and then hit enter. So the system is rebooting. I'm going to type in my password.
click on the uh, display. Gonna change this to nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Apply. Keep the configuration. Gonna click that on. Close that. So one of the first things I want to do after booting into my freshly installed installation is to update the system. But before I do that, I want to change the mirrors to a local mirror that's close to me. So let's uh, go over here and click on this button. Or should I say icon? And for some reason, it's not coming up. There it goes. Welcome to the update manager. So we're just going to click OK. And it says right here, do you want to switch to a local mirror? We're going to say yes. We're going to type in our password. I'm just going to make this a large screen. Now, what you can see here is uh, Linux Mint does its updates from two different types of uh, mirrors. There's the main and also the base. So I'm going to change both of these to a local mirror. I'm going to click on the top one first. And I'm going to pick uh, University of Waterloo Science Club. It's near where I live. I'm going to apply it. Then I'm going to click on the base mirror. And I'm going to do the same one. I'm going to click on the University of Waterloo Science Club. So I've changed my the two main mirrors that Linux Mint does its updating from and downloading from to a mirror that's in Canada and not too far away from where I live. And I'm going to click OK. And it's updating the cache. It's just going to take a moment or two. And we'll be ready to do our updates. Almost. And there you go, it's done. So I'm going to, the mirrors have been changed. I'm going to close this window. Now I'm going to apply the update. And ask me for my password again. I type in my password. And it's going through the procedure. And soon it's going to bring up a window that tells me how many updates there are to do. And here we go. So I'm going to make this window big. And there's a hunt, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner, there are 126 updates selected. So I'm going to hit this at the top here. I'm going to hit install updates. This update, this, sorry, this upgrade will trigger additional changes. It's telling you that it's updating some kernels. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to ask me for my password again. And it's installing the update. This procedure is probably going to take about 20 minutes. If you do your updates once a week, also Linux Mint in the bottom right hand part of the screen, it's going to tell you when updates are ready and notify you when there's updates. If you do your updates regularly, it won't take that long. It's probably only going to take three minutes, five minutes at the most. But this particular update, because it's updating from an ISO that's, that was made in July of this year of 2022, uh, this particular update's probably going to, because it's an old ISO, this update's probably going to take about 20 minutes.
So I'm gonna pause the video and come back when the system is updated. Okay, so we finished doing all our updates. That took about 15 minutes. And uh, now we're gonna have to reboot our system. As you can see, it says you're right up here. Reboot required. So I'm gonna close the window. I'm gonna hit my menu. Hit the red button here. And you have the choice of suspending, restart, cancel, shutdown. I'm gonna click on restart. And it's gonna reboot into the system with all the updates. And I'm gonna show you some things I like to do with Linux Mint as far as configuring it and changing the screens and just making some changes that I like to have. So I'm going to put in my password. And here we are. We're in the system. And as you can see, we didn't have to fix the resolution. It remembered it. And like I said before, if you're installing on bare metal, you won't have to worry about the resolution at all. And if you're installing in a virtual machine, you only have to fix it once. So here we are, we're in Linux Mint. One of the things I like to do is change the, for the time format. So I'm going to click that on. I'm going to click on, I'm going to click off 24 hour clock. I'm going to click on display date. So here we have it. It's Friday, December 2nd at 6.43 p.m. Another thing I like to do is install my weather app. So I'm going to click on anywhere, my right click button on the bottom bar. And I'm going to click on applets. I'm going to hit download. And it's downloading and updating or refreshing all the applets that come with Linux Mint. And I'm going to install my weather app. It's going to automatically know where I live and it's going to give me the weather for the city I live in. So here it is here. I'm going to click weather. I'm going to click on the download button and it's downloading it. Now it's downloaded. So I'm going to click on this button here, manage. I'm going to click on weather. I'm going to add it. I'm going to close the window and there it is. It's five degrees Celsius and it's cloudy. Now I'm going to format my weather app. So I'm going to hit configure. I'm going to open up here and enable Minutely precipitation forecast. I'm going to click that on. Hourly forecast. I don't need 48 hours. I'm going to change that to 26. And now I'm going to close the app. So there you have it. It's 5 degrees Celsius. Now you can click this on and it gives you the forecast. You can click on the, the bottom button and move. Uh, see what the weather is going to be for the next 26 hours. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ch change the uh, wallpaper. So I'm going to right click anywhere on the screen and change desktop background. So Linux Mint comes with a variety of um, different their own wallpapers. They also have some nice pictures. You can also get your own down your own wallpaper. Uh, let's see here what looks like a nice one. Let's try this one. Wow, that's nice. I really like that. I think I'm going to leave that. So I'm going to close the screen. And this one looks interesting too. Let's try that. Oh. That's nice. 
but I think that's a bit too much for my eyes. There's another one. Let's try that. Oh, nice. Bit bright though. Let's go to that one. I'm going to keep that one for now. So we can shut the uh, wallpaper screen. Another thing I like to do is to go to settings. So this button here is your settings button. And these are all your settings. Uh, I'm probably going to go to font and I'm going to change, make these fonts a bit larger. So I'm going to change them to, let's try 11 and let's try bold. Select, there you are. And so it just makes this a little easier to read. And then another thing I'm going to do is go back into settings, open this up. I'm going to turn off my screensaver. I don't like it. I'm going to turn off these buttons. And of course, let's go back to settings again. You can keep the screensaver on if you like to use the screensaver. It's just a matter of preference. I'm going to go into power manager as well. Right now, the default is set for 30 minutes. It's going to put your computer to sleep. I don't like it. So I'm going to change this to never. Keep that at never, keep that at ask. And I'm going to go back into my settings. I'm going to click on the firewall. It's going to ask you for your password. And I guess I double clicked that too many times. <laughs> so I'm going to click on the firewall. I'm going to tur turn this toggle it on here. And it's stuck. Okay, so my firewall is now enabled. Now let's just go back in there and see if it's still enabled. I'd just like to check this. And it's enabled. So I'm going to close that. And um, let's see what else am I going to do. I think that's probably it for now as far as setting up the system. So here we have um, Firefox down here. Let's click it on. So we have Firefox. Um, here, as you can see, I'm going to close this. Uh, now, let's say you don't want your icons to be on the main screen. You can right click anywhere in here. And customize. Let's just make that large screen. Desktop settings. And you can change this here. So I don't like to have icons on my uh, main screen. So I'm going to click on no desktop icon icons. Close that and you can see they're gone now. And if you like to have icons on, you can turn it back on and you can have as many icons on your main screen as you want. Now let's say I don't want my uh, Firefox icon to be on the bottom screen, on the bottom bar. I can take it off, unpin from panel, and that's gone. We have, uh, you have here, Firefox here. Let's open it again. You also have... Uh, Rhythm box. This is a, a music player. No, I don't have any music MP3s in my in the system here, but uh, that's it there. Also comes loaded with Office. This is LibreOffice. So here you would have your uh, spreadsheet program. I'm just opening it up so you can see it, and that's LibreOffice. You also have um, your Office Writer program, and LibreOffice can read it can read MS Word documents. Can also read MS Excel documents. 
and it can also convert documents as well. Now you notice it's a bit dark here. Uh, let's see if we can fix that. Go into options, view, and looks like they're using an older version of LibreOffice. That's okay. Uh, what I could do is go into the welcome screen. Go down to first steps and take off to dark. There you go. So that's your LibreOffice writer. Let's close that. Let's open up uh, the spreadsheet program again. And there's a spreadsheet program. Uh, anything else I'd like to show you? In, um, in video, so this, this is your music player. This here is a uh, video player, it plays videos. And oh yeah, I should show you the software manager as well. So this up here is your software manager. If you open it up, it takes you to their software repository where you can download apps for free. And it's just taking a second because it's the first time we've gone into it since we've done this install. And there we have it. And you know what? I'm going to put on the dark mode. This is too bright for my eyes. I'm going to go back into the welcome screen. I should spell it right. First steps, I'm going to click on that dark mode because I like it better. So here we have um, some featured apps that you can download. Accessories. Fonts. So let's just download uh, some apps. I'm going to download one app. Uh, now, let's see, what should I do? Internet. I am going to download. OK, so I'm going to go into accessories. And download HTOP. And I'm going to hit, this is what it is here. It's what it looks like. I'm going to hit install. It's going to ask me for my password. And it's installing it. And then I'm going to do something else. I'm going to, Brave Browser is another web browser I like to use. It's a fantastic web browser that respects your privacy. I'm going to download that. So first I'm going to see if it's in, if they have it in their repository, and I know they do, but let's just do a search. So you type in the word brave, and let's see if they have it. But I know they do, and here it is, Brave Browser. So this is what the Brave Browser looks like. It tells you a bit about it. I'm gonna hit the install button. I'm gonna hit continue. And it's installing. Just going to take a second. OK, so Brave Browser finished in downloading and is installed. So I'm going to close here. I'm going to close my uh, thing. And let's go here. And let's go into HTOP first. So we can see this is HTOP. It's showing my system information. And now let's go into Brave Browser. You have internet and there's Brave. Let's open up the Brave Browser and see what it looks like. It's asking me if I want to make it my default browser. Let's say maybe later. And there it is. There's Brave Browser. So this is Linux Mint. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. I am the Linux Mensch.